Hello and welcome to this final video in our series of CA's Continuous Testing Suite. So today we're going to look at the release pipeline. So the release pipeline is key to the, the modern software factory. It's the, key, it's the driver that gets those concepts from the left on the screen to something that your customers can use on the right of the screen. So what we have here is um, the product set you're going to see as part of this demonstration. So previously we looked at the requirements so using our CA project portfolio management to define your um, your projects and then that links with Agile Central to drive your user stories and your features. We modeled it all in Agile Requirement Designer and in the previous video we then showed how the developer can use our tool set to then build out the actual changes. So today what we're going to show you is um, the next stage which is the release so in the top right hand corner it's how do you take that code change and push it through your various environments in a secure, reliable way. And we're going to show you that by showing uh, our continuous delivery director dashboard, which is driving the CA Atomic tool, which is the automation tool. And then we'll leverage the tools just in the screen. So we're going to use test data management, application test, blaze meter, our service virtualization tool, and various code security scans. Now, before we covered the requirements and the developer, so we're going to take those away. Uh, and this is what we're going to start with today. So we're going to go through, um, generate a release, and then uh, the automation that goes with that release. And that'll be kicked off from our Jenkins build. And then we'll go to show you this being deployed through our environments. So let's go to the demonstration. So we're going to go to the, uh, the UI. So we're going to start with the application. <clears throat> so the application we're using is, is the, called the Medrec application. It's part of WebLogic. And for us to do our testing, we need to do a few things. So let's log in first to the application. So if I log in as my administrator user, to actually test the application, we're going to deploy an update to the Medrec application, as well as the, up the update to the, the lightweight UI we created in the developer story. And as part of this, we're going to change the database in our Oracle database. So these patients you see here are in that Oracle database, and this is patient records. So it's things like social security numbers, dates of births, things that you have to be very careful with. What you're looking at here is all synthetically generated data. So what we're going to show you is, um, as part of our deployment, we're going to remove all this data and then generate new data. So when we come back to this screen, uh, this will all be new patient records. And what we're also going to do, if I just go back to here, um, this is the web UI that we showed you before. Remember, we made this change. So the change in the previous video was we modified this graphic. And what we're going to do is we're going to push out the change into our uh, higher environments. Now, to do that, we need to do two things. One is we need to um, use our continuous delivery director to build your release pipeline. So here's our dashboard of our release pipeline. And we've got various metrics here as to how much automation we're doing, how many manual tasks how long we're spending each environment for applications. So you can see here in Medrec, we spend a lot of time in development and very little in production, which is good. But we're going to focus on a particular um, <coughs> release. Now, our releases can be bundled into tracks. So if we go to our track screen. We have a track here. So what this track is showing you is that um, these are milestones for our deliverable. And you can see here that all of our releases have missed that milestone. And this is the current date that we're moving on to. So it, it may be we would take these releases off of this track and then add them to the next one. Or it may be that we, we are, you no, know, when we get to this milestone, we're back on track yet. But we're going to focus on this release to start with. We're going to drill into there. And what we've done is a few things. One is we've actually got, um, we've modeled all the tasks that need to be done, manual and automatic, to get from development to production. So each of these columns is showing you an environment and then each of these boxes is the task that needs to happen so we need to do we need to generate test data we need to create a virtual service in our case we need to provision some infrastructure we're going to show you a docker provisioning um, we need to scan that with security scan we then need to deploy the updates and then we need to run our testing which is here and then if everything works we can then decommission that and this is what we're going to show you now as well as in this screen as well as the the release details you can see here we've also got integration to our agile central tool so if you remember in the the first video we assigned a user story to a release um, now this is the release we assigned it to and if we expand this left hand tree 
Um, this data here is the data from Agile Central. So the release team um, can see all of the user stories and the features assigned to the feature the release we're working on. And if I refresh this, we'll see that was a user story that we assigned in the first video to this release. Um, we can now track this in our reporting system to identify where that, that user story is in the release pipeline. Now what we're going to do is actually um, kick off our release and we're going to do that from Jenkins. So we're going to my Jenkins system and what we'll see is um, the last build is build 191. Um, and as you notice when we looked at the application, the build number was on the screen so it will change as we go through the deployment. And we're going to click build now. So we just started build 192. So if we go to CDD, uh, what's going to happen is the development phase is going to start. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to send a flow doc notification to say that we've just started this build in this environment. And we're then going to actually go through and actually you know, set up our test data, our virtual services, our Docker environment. So we're now doing this. And if we go into uh, our various screens, if we go to Docker first, you can see these Docker containers were stopped and we've just started them. So that's part of our provisioning is we've spun up these Docker containers. If we go to our dev test product, we can go and look at the virtual services. And what we'll see is we just started a virtual service. That one there, it's been about 16 seconds. We also see the virtual services we created earlier in the previous videos. Now also what we're doing is um, we're running a third party tool called Twistlock to run a security scan against our Docker images. So we integrate with third party tools as well as CA tools and we're generating our test data. Now with the test data, we're doing two things. So if I go to our test data screen, what you'll see is uh, one is we're generating data. So this line here is we just generated some data. And um, as part of that, we removed those patient records from the application server and we created brand new data. And what we're also doing is we're gonna use our find and reserve functionality to then reserve a record. So this record here has just been reserved. So if I drill into that, we'll see what we've just done is chosen one of those records we created in the database, uh, this user here, and we're gonna use this as part of our testing. So when we do our UI test, this is the user we're gonna to use to test that the, the web server is working properly with the back end. Now, because that's all done, we can now move on. So we've now moved on to, to deploy our application. So we're now down to this step. You can see that's the build number there. Now, if we go to Atomic, we can show you that. So in Atomic, I can go and look at my running tasks. So Atomic is doing all the heavy lifting. And you see here, here's our build running. Now I double click on that. We're doing two things. Uh, we've taken those updates. And so the web updates, we've pushed down deployed. And on the bottom here, what we're doing here is we're stopping our web logic application. We're undeploying it. We're deploying it and we're starting it. And now obviously in a production environment, that would be something we'd be doing with a cluster and we'd do this seamlessly. Now within Atomic, we have defined all of the different processes. So it's very simple to build a process. So while we're in here, we can build a simple process. So we go to workflows and we then say, say we want to create a new workflow. We just call it deployment. We choose the type, we choose the application, we do create. Uh, you then get a, a framework and then using the uh, the plugins, we can then generate our what we need to do. So if we want to copy a file, we can say we want to copy a file. So we say we want to do a, a file copy, we drag it in. We then put a link. Now we need to update a registry key. Um, it's very object oriented modeling. Um, so we're going to add a key. And there you go. So as you can see, it's very simple to build these flows out. If we go back to our CDD tool, what we'll see is um, that deployment's finished. And now what we're doing is we're doing various things. We're um, running some automated GUI tests. We're running performance tests. And we're checking that Vericode has done its thing. So when Jenkins did its build, we posted that build to Vericode and we're currently waiting for Vericode to finish the scan. So we can go look at these tools now. So we'll start with the, the, the UI testing. So if we go to our dev test portal, we'll see that we've got our test running. Um, that's the test and they're all run and they're all completed. And if I drill into that one there, uh, this is the test that actually used the, the test data. 
So that's that user that you saw in TDM. We generated this user through synthetic data and we just confirmed that the we can use our Selenium script to log in and actually check that user's working properly. We've also got the test case 33, which is the test case we created at the very start video, the very first video. That was the, the output test we created. Now we've also kicked off various um, Blaze Meter tests. So these are two Blaze Meter tests. And what we've got is a, a performance test. And this performance test is started and we're now generating a load to test the performance. And we've run, we're running an API test. So the API test is a, a functional API test to make sure the API is working. So these tests are still running. And if I go to Vericode, what we'll see here is, um, here's our application Vericode, and that's build 192. So if remember, that's the build we just kicked off. And that build's actually finished, it's complete. Uh, and we can view the report here. So we can come in here and see um, the status. We can see in the policy control, we actually passed. So we set a level of um, what we expected to for this particular application and we've passed it but there are some issues and in the findings and recommendations in Vericode we do then highlight what the issue is and how long we think it will take to fix it. So if we go back to CDD what we'll see is um, we're still showing these tests running because the blaze meter test is still running the API test is still running and very shortly the Vericode test should mark itself as complete so you can see there that the API test just marked itself as complete uh, the Vericode test will mark itself complete shortly and the blaze meter one should also just finish now once all those tests are complete we've done our testing um, the results have been published to our agile central tool and the next step in our flow is to actually check did all the test cases passed that's here so once these tests are complete we'll do a validation that they've all completed their um, they all pass their tests and if they do we'll then move on to uh, we can then deprovision our environment. So what we can do is we can deprovision the virtual services and the Selenium grid, and also then we can notify the development team that we've finished in this phase, and we can then commit this build to our repository, and it's ready then to promote into these higher environments. So you can see the test cases have all passed, um, so that's been marked as complete. And now what we're doing is we're deprovisioning those virtual services, we're deprovisioning the grid. So if we go back to these screens we looked at before, you'll see uh, we've stopped those containers. And on a virtual service, uh, that's the virtual service. If I refresh this screen, we just stopped that virtual service. So we've tidied up the infrastructure that we created. Now what we're gonna do now is go back to Agile Central where we started with our user stories. And what we can see here is um, that's the story we started with. Remember those test case 33. And the the users of Agile Central can now see that build 192 ran and it passed. And we can drill into that build. And we've got a link back to the, the app test tool to look at the results. But also all the other testing is fed back to the user stories. So if we look at these other user stories here, if we go into user story 6, um, this one was going to our Blaze API tool. So we can see build 192 passed. And if I click on here and launch this screen, we can go to Blaze Meter and look at the, the output of that API test. So we can see we had some positive, negative, and edge test cases, and we passed all those tests. And also we did a performance test. So if I scroll down in this, this one here, you'll see this is a performance test. Um, and that was a, a Blaze Meter performance test. And we can click on these links here. And the same thing, we'll go off and look at those reports in Blaze Meter. So you can see here the, the load that was generated, how long the test took, uh, the errors, the response time, all the information you need. And there's also an executive summary report that gives you a high level uh, overview of the test. We'll go back to the, the home page. So finally, what we can do is we can go back to our CDD tool and now we're actually past this phase, we can run a promotion. So you can see these, these um, automatic statuses here. Um, it means that we can automatically promote from development to QA to UAT. However, we've got approval gates. So that's why I didn't run. So I can approve that this build's good. I can approve it. And now automatically, we're gonna take that build 192 and we're gonna deploy it into this higher environment build 175 uh, and so it goes on so what we're doing here is we're testing the same deployment every time for our environment so as well as testing our code we're also testing our deployments so if we go back to our powerpoint 
So what we just saw there was um, the, the CA toolchain working together. So we've seen Agile Requirement Designer to model our requirements. Uh, we used Service Virtualization Community Edition to actually for the developer, but also the full version with part of our release pipeline. Uh, we used test data management to generate our test data. We ran our test application tests. And with BlazeMeter, we did a functional API test as well as our performance tests. And we used Vericode to confirm that our security scans are complete, all run via CDD and Automic as the orchestration tool. So at the end of the day, that's the end of the CA continuous testing story. Thank you for your time. <laughs>